Governor Andrew M. Cuomo said Saturday the state would allow horse racing tracks and the Watkins Glen International Auto Racing Track to open without fans on June 1, allowing for events that can be televised. Great, we can have economic activity without having a crowd, that's great, Mr. Cuomo said. We can do that in this state. But no crowds, no fans. Mr. Cuomo listed several horse racing tracks, including Belmont Park on Long Island, as being eligible for reopening in June. Watkins Glen International, which was set to host a NASCAR race in August before the pandemic arrived, is also eligible to open next month. Mr. Cuomo also reiterated his hope to have baseball return without fans, but noted that it was out of his control. You can have baseball without a crowd, but it can still be televised, he said. The news of a renewed economic engine came as major indicators, such as new hospitalizations and virus-related deaths, continued a steady decline. The number of new deaths went up slightly, to 157, up from 132 reported a day earlier. The number of total deaths had remained under 200 in the last week, according to state data. That number has been stubborn, he said. We don't want to go back to the hell we've gone through. The number of new cases also saw a decline, 400, compared to 437 reported on Friday. It's interesting to look at the curve, how fast we went up and now how relatively slow the decline has been, Mr. Cuomo said. Spike happens quickly, but resolves slowly. The announcements of the sporting venue's opening was another step in the state's reopening. On Friday, five of the ten New York regions were given the green light to resume a sanitized version of non-essential businesses' operations, including construction, manufacturing and curbside retail. Mr. Cuomo also threw a lifeline to eager beachgoers on Friday when he announced that a consortium of four neighboring states, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut and Delaware, had agreed to reopen beaches and other waterfronts by Memorial Day weekend, provided local governments enforced social distancing restrictions and reduced capacity. Local governments, however, are allowed to make their own judgments on opening beaches. In New York City, where infection rates have abated at a slower rate, beaches will remain closed. With a warmer weekend ahead, New York City will continue working to reduce crowds at parks in Brooklyn and Manhattan, including deploying police officers to limit access to the popular Sheep Meadow in Central Park, Mayor Bill de Blasio said. But the city would also reset its approach to enforcing social distancing, Mr. de Blasio said at his daily briefing on Friday. Police officers would now focus on breaking up large gatherings, with the goal of avoiding giving summons, he said. The police department would also no longer be asked to enforce orders requiring people to wear face coverings if they cannot properly social distance, Mr. de Blasio said. The announcement came after complaints in recent weeks that the police were unfairly targeting black and Latino residents in their enforcement. On Thursday, the mayor criticized officers seen in a video wrestling a woman to the ground after attempting to arrest her for not covering her face. For almost two months, much of daily life has been halted in New York, New Jersey and Connecticut as officials sought to bring the coronavirus outbreak under control. But with the virus showing signs of retreat, officials across the region have turned their attention to reviving the economies of their states. This week and next will offer some of the first crucial tests of whether those plans will work and a window into what normal life may be like in the months ahead. Here is a look at what types of businesses, services and public places are expected to reopen, and when, in each of the three states. On March 20, Governor Andrew M. Cuomo issued an executive order putting New York on pause. Under the 10-point plan, all of non-essential businesses had to close by the evening of March 22. Mr. Cuomo extended the order once in April, and again on Thursday for a majority of New Yorkers. On Friday, five of the state's ten regions became eligible to begin Phase 1 of the state's reopening plan. The five regions are The following types of businesses can resume in those regions, provided that certain public health measures are in place. As of Wednesday, elective surgeries were allowed in 47 New York counties. State court officials said this week that judges and staff members would begin returning to courthouses in 30 upstate counties on May 20. State residents have been mostly required to stay at home under an executive order in effect since March 21. 
Governor Philip D. Murphy's order makes exceptions for trips to visit businesses considered essential, getting takeout food restaurants, procuring medical services or to meet other urgent demands. Mr. Murphy said this week that under a new executive order, some non-essential businesses would be allowed to resume operations at various points this month. Among the changes, most Connecticut residents have been under orders to stay at home as much as possible since mid-March. But the state has not been hit quite as hard by the virus as New York and New Jersey, and officials envision what amounts to a broader, faster reopening. Officials announced earlier this month that restaurants, offices, retail establishments and hair salons would be allowed to open on May 20 at 50% capacity with proper health precautions in place. More specifically, Connecticut officials have also said that colleges and universities in the state can reopen in stages over the summer and fall and that summer camps are on track to begin in late June. As the New York Times follows the spread of the coronavirus across New York, New Jersey and Connecticut, we need your help. We want to talk to doctors, nurses, lab technicians, respiratory therapists, emergency services workers, nursing home managers, anyone who can share what's happening in the region's hospitals and other health care centers. A reporter or editor may contact you. Your information will not be published without your consent. Reporting was contributed by Michael Gold, Matt Stevens, Andrea Salcedo, Edgar Sandoval and Katie Van Sickle.